Hi guys, a very warm welcome to Motorhoming Adventures. Motorhoming Adventures. Absolutely, this is our new channel and the old one being? It was, it was offshore and onshore adventures but here we're going to bring you all things motorhoming, the UK, Europe, further afield, who knows. Absolutely and we'll also be bringing across some of our original films that are on our old channel or motorhoming films of course and we'll be bringing them on to this channel so you don't miss out absolutely yep yeah. so stay tuned all things motorhoming technical trips travels you name it it's great to have you along yeah absolutely and if you enjoy the channel please do subscribe oh, of course please do subscribe and of course the odd like is good too thank you thank you all to our new subscribers and, yes um, thank you to those who are still following us keep coming with your comments we really do enjoy them thank you and today we are just nipping out to cardigan which isn't far from us just a little bit further north it's our nearest fiat dealer um, we had the other day coming back from north wales we had the engine light of doom come on um, a number of you will know that and i'll show you it in a minute um, it came up on the amber light and with stop go Unav or stop start I should say unavailable so we're going to get that uh, addressed today at the Fiat dealership when hopefully they'll plug it in and do their magic so come on this short trip with us um, and I'll hopefully be able to show you one or two bits of what they get up to and how uh, they diagnose the faults um, on the Fiat Ducato come along and uh, enjoy the ride okay so a chilly old January day but Listen to that lovely noise. The Truma. Set it by text, switch the heater on, and yeah, we're all working in here. Fantastic. Well let's try and uh, let's try and show you the fault that's come up. Engine management light came on. Um, <clears throat> the good old orange light of death. And uh, let's see if I can recreate it. <clears throat> yeah, you see there the uh, engine management light has stayed on. We've then got check engine light, and then uh, up came that warning start stop. Let's just get a bit closer so you can see it. Start stop unavailable. Um, so uh, it was a it was a bit of a oh to turn the radio down. It was a bit of a stop and think um, the last thing I wanted it to do was uh, obviously to go into limp mode um, because we were on the way back from uh, we were a long way away right up in North Wales had about 200 miles to go so it was a case of uh, have a quick check of uh, online as to the likely causes um, didn't find found one or two examples of the similar thing so uh, neither of which had resulted in limp mode so we basically uh, fired her up again and off we went and uh, I've done three or four hundred miles since uh, while waiting for an appointment which we have today at the Fiat garage in Cardigan um, which is our nearest Fiat dealer um, to get it looked at under warranty so uh, yeah so up it came engine management light there um, which often means like stop quickly and don't move another inch uh, but there are occasions uh, which is why I thought I'd just put some footage up of this there are occasions when you get the engine management light um, it doesn't go into limp mode you need to look at perhaps find establish what the fault is um, and on this occasion you see there the start stop exclamation mark next to it and it comes up intermittently saying on the screen there where it's got the uh, average speed there and um, it comes up intermittently there saying start stop unavailable so um, as I say off to cardigan today uh, only about 40 50 miles for us so uh, not too bad uh, and we'll go and see what they've got to say with the uh, lunchtime appointment that we've got and we'll just have a quick check in the garage, make sure everything's stowed. That was incidentally, um, that's of course the uh, heater that gave us those, uh, a few little teething troubles earlier. This, uh, well, back end of last year, 2021. So uh, that was the uh, faulty heating sensor. 
uh, which is in the depths of the uh, heater in there. In the last couple of weeks I've just been putting in a couple of extra hooks for these uh, bungees. Um, just use some tiny little 6mm, uh, tiny little 6 mil, you can just see them there, little 6mm screws um, with some um, adhesive, some marine adhesive in fact, um, which I'll show you the, uh, show you the tube of, um, and then they're self-tapping screws straight in there and it just provides those extra hook points which uh, means that I've got everything on the back wall there because here um, we keep our two uh, two bikes so it leaves enough room then for the bikes to go in alongside here um, so there's one up there and then there's some more around the back there uh, by the ladder um, camping chairs so uh, yeah just keeps everything stowed at the back and it still leaves room for the uh, for a barbecue at the back there uh, and for um, for an inflatable kayak that we take away with us when the weather's a bit better than January um, that we stick in here uh, just behind this bit as well um, so great size garage beds obviously in its fully fully raised position at the moment um, with the switch there fully raised position and then uh, when we're on site the idea being that obviously a lot of this stuff would be out um, bikes would be out and then we could bring the uh, bring the bed itself down a bit uh, if we wanted albeit it's absolutely fine in that position in the raised position but just gives you a little bit more room headroom etc um, when it's down so garage looks okay stowed well be a good test for all those new clips to make sure they all hold nothing shifts around and there it is that's the uh, <coughs> Marine uh, Seekerflex 291i was the product. So as those six mil screws went in, just put some adhesive on the back of the uh, of the uh, eyes themselves, and then just uh, the self tapper just took it in, wiped off the excess where it had come out the sides. But it's a seriously good uh, adhesive that we've used previously on the boat, and um, no hesitation to use it again here. It just adds that bit of extra bond. Good stuff. Give it a go. Well, Cardigan Town Centre and a quick stop off as we're uh, half hour early, cup of tea and parked up in a very nice spot on the estuary at uh, Cardigan. Lovely spot indeed. Look at that. Going to have to come back to Cardigan just to try the Indian restaurant. It says the Royal India and also Champagne, but I understand it's currently currently uh, Champagne. 
What a novel idea. Takeaways and a little sit down bit in there. Can't beat a good curry. Anyway, back to the more important things and time to mosey off to the uh, garage for our warranty appointment. See you shortly. Well, and that's us at um, BV Reese, local Fiat dealer, all the way over to Cardigan. Just waiting for the uh, mechanics to pop down and see us after their lunch break. So, ah, good day to you, Nikki. <laughs> so we're just in at BB Reese, squeeze under the uh, squeeze under the roof there, and our good friend here is just setting about, starting to look at the fault, cover off, it's whipped off, and laptop inbound, ready to plug her in. Where does it plug in, out of interest? A uh, 16 pin connector in there. Oh yeah. Underneath the uh, body control unit. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got you. Yeah. That with the green light flashing, that's your plug, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Fantastic. What have we got? Are we in? Sort of. <laughs> there we go. Does it show the fault on there then? Oh, I see, yeah. It's got three on it. Oh, has it? All oh, right. So, three faults showing up as a result of plugging in, and they are. What have we got? That's the one that's going to cause the issues. Particulate matter, matter sensor, sensor circuit sensor. open. Circuit open. There's actually a um, service news yeah. campaign to do on it. There's a what, sorry? Service news to do on it, to oh. do with that sensor. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if we've got one in stock, it'll be done today. If not, I'll order you one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fine. And was that, was that the thing that controls the start-stop? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. And is it likely to be, is it like a sort of one of those sort of known Fiat faults or yeah, is it a... Yeah, which is hence the reason there's a service yeah. to do on it. Ah, I see. So would it have been a recall eventually or...? They might do if they get enough of them. Yeah. But they wait for them to go like-minded, pop up the warning light. Yeah. Yeah. And when the engine management light comes on, it's not... I mean, I know you go into limp mode sometimes, but you if don't... You you don't always... in, if you go into limp mode... Yeah. Lose a lot of power. Yes. Or it starts to flash at you. Yeah. That's a stop situation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've got two, yeah, two fault codes there are the key ones, P24. And when you go into those it uh, it gives uh, the, the garage solution. here the uh, solutions as to uh, how to solve it, which in this case might be the replacement of that uh, part. Fantastic. So, so as soon as it's plugged in there into the laptop here, um, then you can immediately see the issues. Um, and then it's a case of if the parts are in stock, great. If not, then it's a, order. an order and come back. But um, either way, we're not uh, restricted, as it were. The wonders. Laptop to connector. A narrow little road. Um, from this uh, little secondary garage of BV Reese, but look at that, what a lovely little on, sort of it's like a miniature lock gate down at the far end there. And then a little pond. Can somebody shed? Yeah. Seats. Oh yes, yeah, look at that. A little shed, what a fantastic space. <laughs> to sit out watching your duck go around the <coughs> lake. Very good.
Right guys, well I hope that was of uh, some use to you. I know and I see on the forums a lot of uh, discussion about uh, that uh, engine light of doom. Um, we were lucky this time, obviously it didn't uh, put us into limp mode, but um, but yeah, that's uh, that's a fairly straightforward process and um, in two or three days um, we'll be back there to uh, get the parts fitted and hopefully uh, clear that fault code and I'll uh, do another short film that uh, covers that. Um, and also, BV Reese here at Cardigan, they uh, have also got a Weybridge as well. So we were going to um, twist their arm to come fully loaded here um, to Cardigan um, uh, to get uh, a current weight. We're a 4.4 ton axle on this Ducato, but uh, with everything in it, full diesel, full water, both of us, we're going to see what we weigh per axle. So join us in that film um, for an interesting update, a fully loaded, uh, ready for our Spain trip, a fully loaded Moho. Okay. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. And um, if you haven't already subscribed, then please do. Mm -hmm. And don't forget those likes. We like those, don't we? Oh, yes. <laughs> Likes indeed. Okay, guys, till next time. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.